Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Rachel Agar, and I will be your host. And in just a few moments, I will turn it over to Dwayne Johnson to present to you Protecting Physical and Virtual Environments Together. Dwayne is a system engineer at Falcon Store whose experience covers many areas, such as running his own technology company for 16 years, and as a subject matter expert in multi-protocol switching technology and physical plant interconnections, Johnson has written various professional certification exams for IBM and was the chief architect for the 1998 Nagano Olympics fan mail project infrastructure. As a trusted system engineer, Johnson is a knowledgeable and valued member of Falcon Store's team. And now I would like to turn it over to Dwayne. Thank you, Rachel. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, recently we were all up in the New England Territory, and uh, we enjoyed a VMUG together. Uh, and unfortunately, all of you out there were not able to visit our sessions. So even though we had four, uh, I'm sure many of you were worried about uh, getting to McGrady's and getting to the lobster and the beer. So what I'd like to do in this quick overview for you and I say quick because there's a lot more that we can cover. However, uh, you know, we're going to limit this to time to about an hour, okay? Uh, so there's a lot more for you guys to kind of get into, get involved with. Uh, so I'm going to tell you now, remember, right, to log on to the Falcon Store website and do some research. As always, we're always going to be here for you so you can reach out to us, right, to receive more information or detail about how we can assist you in your environments in being better protected, right? Again, both physical and virtual environments are protected by the same solution. So that being the case, I'm going to start here. Again, my name is Dwayne Johnson. That is my email address, so please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I am more than happy to assist any of you at any time. Let's dive in. So here's our quick agenda. Right, so we're going to go over right what's happening in today's climate, uh, the impact that backup has right on server virtualization, how we can improve data mobility, how we address right data protection challenges for both again the physical and virtual environment. Okay, I'm sure many of you out there are familiar with different technologies and how to protect just the physical environment, and then some different technologies that may just protect the virtual environment. The benefit to this overview that we're going to do is going to show you how we can protect the entire environment. And of course, uh, we're going to talk about enhancing disaster recovery. So uh, during that section as well, we'll talk about things like SRM, uh, and you guys will be able to excellently read uh, what's on the screen, so I may give you a little bit of filler about stuff that you may not be able to read about. And But again, we're going to be here for you regardless so that you can get additional information from us, the Falcon Store website, and uh, future demos that we may have in the future. So where do we start? We start right here in today's world. What's happening? Well, some of you may have noticed, uh, I'm sure you have, but for those of you who haven't, right, the amount of data in your environment is growing year over year. Okay? What does that mean? Well, that means as your production environments grow, right, you also have to kind of encompass protection for those environments, and as they're growing, your protection of that environment has to grow as well. Part of the problems, however, is with things like budget pressure, right, you never have enough capacity or, or enough manpower, right, to keep pace with what's happening with your exploding volumes, okay? We're also fighting things like downtime. So everyone wants a 24 by 7 operation, Right? Everyone wants their data, right? when they want it, where they want it, how they want it. And now with mobile users right, being global, you know, uh, with, with more mobile technology, right, your information has to be available. So the issues right, that arise are with these exploding volumes and, the, and, and trying to push so there's a lack of downtime, okay? there's one key group of us right, that have to manage and maintain these environments and it's becoming extremely difficult. So part of our hope and our goal right, during this session is to kind of describe to you how you can actually kind of put some cost containment and some management to providing data protection for physical and virtual environments as they grow 
so that you can better maintain them and manage them so that you can maintain expenses or keep expenses down, right, and, and kind of minimize downtime, right? So we want to lower cost, increase uptime, okay, and expandability, right? Wonderful. If I don't say this enough, I will tell you that uh, I personally am very frugal. So frugal is different than being cheap. Cheap means I spend two pennies on it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, ah, who really cares? I spend two pennies on it, okay? That's not this solution. This solution is frugal. What does that mean? This means that you get everything that you need, okay, everything that you need, from the protection, the expandability, okay, uh, at a lower cost so that you can manage what you have today, and as you grow at your environment, you can add pieces in the future if you need to. Right? So additional benefit. So let's jump in. So you've heard us say, if you've ever heard anything from Falcon Store, right? one, of our, uh, one of our claims to fame is that we've been saying for probably 10 years that backup is broken. Okay? And now you'll have other sources who are saying the same thing. Okay, so Gartner actually put out some statements, and this is an excerpt from that, but by 2014, 30% of organizations will have changed backup vendors due to frustration over cost, complexity, and or capability. What does that mean? That means you guys are, are really kind of fed up with doing backup the way backup has been occurring for the last 30 years, right? We have virtualized servers now. We've got Snapchat technology. We've got replication. We've got SRM. We've got, we've got site cluster adapters, all this wonderful technology. But we're relegating ourselves to the way backup was done 30 years ago. Okay? So how do we fix that? Right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about, but how do we fix that? Okay? So a lot of you out there right, are looking for separate, probably separate products right, for maybe three or four different vendors on how you're going to protect Right, your hybrid environment, right? You may be 20% virtualized today or 40% virtualized, or some of you may be lucky enough to be 75% virtualized. But sometimes you still have those physical components that you have to protect. While you may have some newfangled thing to protect those virtualized servers, okay? So our goal, again, is to kind of give you a common platform of products, whether you are virtual or physical, that are going to assist you so that, listen, by 2014, you won't be one of those 30% of those organizations out there who need to change backup vendors, right? You'll be happy, right? So what's happening? Well, part of the issues, as I have already mentioned, is your backup windows, right, are being slammed right now, okay? It's almost impossible for you, right, to fit any more data into the backup window you already have if you're even coming close to actually having a backup window that's within, you know, an 18-hour period. I will tell you from experience, I actually have, right, a number of end users, okay, that are now Falcon Store customers who are happier than they used to be, but I will tell you, I hear stories of backup times that start on, you know, a Thursday night and run through Tuesday, okay? So we need to help that, right? We need to get rid of those types of environments or, the, or kind of change the way you're doing your protection so that you don't have to, you know, kind of live in the legacy, okay? So what we want to do is get out of the legacy environments, right, using, using that old technology and move to where we can give you something better, right, than, you know, RPOs or, or RTOs that are, that are days long. So how do we do that? How do we reduce the RTO and the RPO to near zero and really improve your operational efficiency. We're going to do that by enabling business continuity in your environments for both the virtualized environment as well as the physical environment. Okay? That's going to give you a platform so that in the future, okay, you can now implement a service-oriented data protection model so that you can recover your environments the way you want to. Now, some of you may be saying, well, Dwayne, what does a service-oriented data protection model, what does that mean? Basically, that, that really means this, okay? You provide services, right? If you're an IT manager or you're a SAN administrator or an exchange administrator, you're offering services to your users. And those users just may be, right, the people, the colleagues that you work with, okay? But they rely on these services, okay? But when we give them services, it's not just mail anymore. 
right? It's not just databases. It's not just web servers or database servers, okay? A lot of your data is intermingled in a sense where, yes, you may have, okay, a spreadsheet, but that spreadsheet may be fed to you from a web server, right, and then and kind of transmorphed into an application so that on your cell phone or your mobile device, you know what's going on at your customer locations or you know how much how much of a certain SKU you have in stock, okay? So if we're going to protect these types of environments, we want to be able to recover them in that same fashion so that you don't want to recover just the database server. You may want to recover the database server, right, and the surrounding applications that provide for you a window into that server, okay, or into that data. So that's what we're talking about. So our customers, right, so we've been doing this for a while, but our customers are optimizing their data in a lot of different ways, but we're going to cover just five specific key areas, okay? Virtualization, right? being able to virtualize their environments, right, from the top down. So that could start with host systems where you have virtualization on platforms like ESX, Hyper-V, Citrix, but that could also start at the foundation, at the storage, and move up, right? We provide that type of solution. Protection. Regardless of where your data resides, we have to protect it, okay? And I will tell you, we're all about the data, okay? So whether it's in a, in a, in a physical SAN on a physical disk, whether it's on a virtualized environment, whether it's, you know, uh, a, a block piece of data sitting in a dedupe repository somewhere, it doesn't really matter. We're about protecting your data, okay? Your data outside of the people, your data is the most critical asset that you have, and it's important that we protect it. We protect it so that we can easily recover it. So rapid recovery, of course, is our next best thing. So you've got your localized data. We want to protect it so we can recover it rapidly. Excellent. Right? Rapid recovery. Excellent. But what's next? Well, hey, I've got to get my data off-site. Why? Well, hey, I may have some compliance issues. Right? I may just want to have some safeguards knowing that if anything happens to this infrastructure in this brick-and-mortar building, that my data is somewhere else, right? That leads us to replication. And from replication, having our data outside our brick-and-mortar location, I now have the ability to do disaster recovery, okay? Now, there are some small disasters, right, where, you know, you, you leave the lights on too long, and you get the power bill and they turn the power off, right? Well, that's localized, not an issue, right? We can cover that with just protection and rapid recovery. When I talk about disaster recovery, it really means things that are outside of your immediate control, okay? You know, whether they're full-fledged disasters where you've got meteors falling on, you know, the planet, or if it's a disaster where, hey, the power company cut power to the entire grid in your section of town, okay? These are disasters Right, that you have to live with from day to day, okay? So when we talk about things like disaster recovery and business continuity, okay, these are specifically the areas we talk about. So this is where I give you my definition of disaster recovery. Disaster recovery means I've got my data at a local location. I replicate it somewhere else. If I need to get it back to my local location, I replicate it back. That's my definition of disaster recovery. Business continuity means I've got my data at my location. I replicate it somewhere else. I now want to interoperate with that data at that remote location, okay, outside of my location. That's business continuity. In our solutions, we provide for you both the ability to have disaster recovery and business continuity. So because, right, this is a VMUG, we're actually going to spend a little bit of time talking about how we integrate with VMware. But remember I told you, this is half of your solution because we're going to protect both your virtual environment as well as your physical environment. Okay? Great. So what do we do at Falcon Store? Well, we actually provide a set of tools that enhance VMware's data protection. We have integration, right, with the vStorage APIs for best performance. We can provide, right, 100% transactional integrity for data for fast restores. And we enable accelerated data mobility and provisioning. And there is actually some slides coming up that I'll get more specific to that, okay? So wonderful stuff coming up for you, right? Makes more sense then, okay? Our solutions integrate 
with Site Recovery and Site Recovery Manager, okay, and your vCenter infrastructure. This allows us to give you, right, what's most familiar to you, right, is that one button click disaster recovery scenario where instead of, you know, trying to figure out what you have to do, just click on the button to take over that remote environment and you're up and running. What else does it include? It also includes, right, some twos. Well, what do you mean some twos? Well, some P2Vs, some P2Ps, some V2Vs, V2 different Vs, P to different Ps, a lot of twos in there. Okay, so a lot of conversion that we can actually help you or assist you do manually or automatically on demand as you need it. Right? Wonderful stuff. All of this is powered, okay, particularly the V to V and P to V and V to different V around our recover track technology right, that comes with your solution. So this is where I also tell you, I remind you again, I am frugal, okay. Everything I'm talking about right now is included in the base purchase price of your solution. Remember, this is a capacity-based model, so you get all this wonderful technology, right? So great. So I'm going to give you a quick, and you guys probably know more about this than I do, but I'm going to give you a quick overview into some of the vStorage APIs for data protection, right, or what they call VADP from the VMware side of things. So... <clears throat> What's really some of the issues that, that occur? Well, listen, you guys know, I'm going to let you read while I give you some information, right? So you guys can read this slide while I give you some additional information. You guys know that over the last three or four iterations of ESX, okay, that VMware has been pushing back to storage vendors, okay, and application providers to provide more utilization, more tool sets, from their side via API to provide better protection of virtual machines that are that are guests in the ESX world. Okay. So that's not going to limit, right, just the things that may run, right, at the level with, you know, VSS snapshots with Microsoft. Right? You have a whole Linux environment. You have other environments as well that people are going to start hypervising. So okay, what 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 has to occur? Right? So in looking at environments, okay, VMware is now providing things like change block tracking, right? And there are products out there that, that rely on, right, what ESX is doing for them to operate. One of the benefits of the Falcon Source solution is, right, we can be independent. So if, if things break down within your ESX environment, we can actually, because we're outside of that environment, right, we can help recover or bring back or, or have better uptime in an environment where we, where we sit. So there are a few things that occur when you have uh, VMware backups with VADP, okay? So what are they? Well, transaction integrity. Right now, there's no island level recovery, and it's for VSS or things that support VSS only, so that's Microsoft only, right? So what happens to those Linux servers you may have in the environment, right? They don't, they don't have that level of protection. You may have some outages. Right? That's not a good thing. VMware snapshots do still, unfortunately, inflict a performance overhead on the production VM, VMware hosts, right, due to things like the redo, the redo log files and change block tracking, okay? Also, when you are scheduling these backup operations to occur, okay, these are still normally done in the evening or in what we call off hours so that they don't impact production, right, during the normal business hour. The problem with that is I told you very early on that we're trying to all move to an environment where our data and our services are available 24-7. So basically, there's no such thing anymore as a backup window that only happens at night. Okay? Again, more things to consider. Right? Your need of costly swing storage to hold snapshots during backups. Right? Those of you who are familiar with v, VADP and even VCB from you know a previous lifetime know what that means. Okay, and with a lot of these other things that are occurring, there's no integration right with vCenter or Site Recovery Manager. So here's VADP backup at a glance. Okay, so here are your production vSphere environments, here are your host systems, right, your virtual machines. They're looking down to the storage level, okay? You then trigger those uh, snapshots. 
So then what happens is, well, hey, that BMD key, that BMDK image, right, has to be mounted somewhere else so that you can actually back all that data up. Okay, so depending upon what tools you're using, right, that look a little bit different, but listen, what's occurring? You're now using, okay, other storage or that that, that redo log area, okay, to maintain your actual running transactions, right? Because we've taken your production environment and we've kind of halted it. And your production environment could be running on very nice disk. But now when I want to do these backups, right, well, I have to have that same nice class of disk, right? Actually, it should be even speedier over here because we're doing more write operations and more read operations, right? What, what, what does that mean? It means you, you may have a slot in your environment, Right. Would it be nice to use less, less expensive disk for this? Right. But the issue is you can't. Okay. So that's kind of VADP at a glance. So how do your backup vendors, and there are many of them, right, integrate with VMware? Well, normally, during the normal operation mode, right, there's read and write activity to the virtual machine. After the snapshot's initiated, okay, all the new writes go to that redo log file, okay, for the length of the backup. So this is no different, again, than those legacy backups you've been doing for years, right? The cycle may be a little bit shorter now, right? So it may not take the 12 hours it used to take you, or it may be take six hours, but this is still time where you're doing all this processing, okay, in your environment, right? You're doing all this backup processing in the environment, and you're halting, you know, critical I.O., okay? Now, so you've got some, in, you have some impact to your production environment. Now, when you're all done with this backup, you think everything is hunky-dory, that I can go back to full operation? No, because once you complete this backup, right, we go down to point three. Once you complete that backup process, now all of that data you have accumulated in that redo log has to be committed back to your primary storage. So, again, your environment's going to be hit. So your environment's not hit once just when you're doing the backup, okay? It hits when you start the backup. It hits harder when you do the snapshot so you can create the backup during the backup window, and again, after the backup's completed, you have another hit to performance because you have to write that, relu that redo log file back to your VMs on the production disk. That's a lot of uh, accumulated writes that have to be ma manipulated in the environment. That's a lot of overhead, right, for any storage system. Okay? So, again, what happens? If you start now, right, because you're not going to back up one VM, you're going to back up a few, so what occurs? Well, you're, you have now a compound environment where you've got all these redo log files occurring from all these virtual machines, okay? Look, your backup window gets even longer than it was if you were doing one, and all this heavy production I.O. is going to usually bring your applications that are running in this environment to a screeching halt, and no one wants that, okay? So how do we solve that problem, right? So I want to apologize to you because I've been taking you through some of the pains that you're used to, and my goal is not to do that, okay? I just want to remind you of some of the pain you've been having just a little bit, just a little bit, so that now when we talk about, you know, what the solution is, you have a better understanding of, of what we're doing and how we're doing it, how we're going to alleviate, right, some of that, some of that pain that you may be having, okay? So what we're going to do okay, is provide to you an integrated solution that you can use for both the physical and the virtual environment, okay? So a lot of things we're going to talk about here is for the virtualized environment. I'm going to describe this for you, but realize that I can also do this in the physical environment, right, on standard hosts, okay, Windows, HPOX, AIX, even things you can't even hypervise, right? Great stuff. So what we have on the left here, right, this first green box up here, right, is our vSphere host. And in this host, I've got some virtual machines. And on these virtual machines, I have an application that may be running, and I have an OS, right? So to keep this simple, let's just happen to say that these can be, you know, Linux virtual machines or they can be Windows virtual machines, okay? And I've split out, you know, so I've got my OS running, I've got my applications running, and they're happy they're doing their thing, okay? I also have some storage. Now, the benefit... Uh, is really this. So at the bottom, we have the your storage, right? I can front your storage today with our NSS product, our network storage server. 
So I'm going to use my appliances or, or my platform to provision storage to your vSphere host environment, right? So we'll have nice clustered storage that you can use for things like high availability, DRS, vMotion, right? Great, fantastic. And with my platform, I'm going to be able to provide to you a few other items that are going to fit nicely into your environment that are going to give you the ability to protect your data even better, right? What are those things? Well, I'm going to give you application-specific agents that you can install in your virtual machine. They exist for things like Exchange, SQL, IBM's DB2, right? SAP, okay? Oracle. Right? So depending on what you're running, you have a, a specific snapshot agent. Okay. What else? I'm also going to give you a file system agent that's going to install in the guest OS. Okay. Why is that? Well, you may have some file and print systems that you want to protect. Right? Our job is to give you your data, but not just in any old format. Right? We want to give you your data in a format that you can use it, where it has transactional integrity. Right? Fantastic. So how do we do that? By providing you snapshot agents that aren't going to do anything more right, than communicate with your virtual machines and tell them when to go into hot backup mode and when to come out of hot backup mode. Okay? Great. And of course, right, our Falcon Store network storage servers, our NSS appliances, can provide the virtualized storage, snapshot, and replication services to the data stores that exist, right, where all of your virtual machines live, right? Wonderful stuff. There's one more piece at the very top, snapshot director virtual appliance. So we used to call this snapshot director for VMware. Actually, it used to be called application snapshot director for VMware. Um, so we've done a lot of work, and we've now made uh, what used to be something that may have been more difficult to manage. It's now a virtual appliance. And now you can actually have one installed in your environment. It may do the job if, you have to, if you've got multiple clusters, you may want to have one or two. But the nice thing now is you don't have to have it installed on all your virtual vSphere hosts. Right? Fantastic. Okay? So we're even making what we have better. So what happens now? What's the difference, Dwayne? You may be asking me, Dwayne, what's the difference? Well, what's the difference between what happens when you do that VADP stuff and all that change block tracking and you, and you have all those redo log files and, and all that data movement and the recovery and all that? Okay, yeah, that, that, it, was, it was painful, right? So I'm going to take you through a very quick overview on, on what we do. So first, what happens? The snapshot director virtual appliance sends a notification to your virtual machine that we're going to take a snapshot. So what happens? Well, the application right, holds up processing. It says, hey, no problem. I'm ready to take a snapshot. I'll hold my I.O. to disk. Whatever I have in my cache for that disk, I'll flush it to the disk so that all the stuff that I may have right, in cache is now on the disk. And I've held that I.O., so you know what? I've got a clean quest state. Fantastic. Okay. The application agent informs the application, and the file system agent informs the operating system. Right? So you may have things that are running in your environment that aren't a database. Right? It could be just files or, or folders. Well, you know what? We want to have a good transactional copy of those as well, so we'll hold that I.O. as well. Flush everything down right, from the file system to the disk. Perfect. At this point that we know there's no I.O. going to the disk, the snapshot director of virtual appliance will initiate a Falcon Store NSS snapshot. Great. So we now have a snapshot down here at the storage level. Fantastic. Because in steps one and two, I've, I've actually halted all that I.O. to disk, right? I now have transactional integrity of any of the data stores that I have right, on my storage. Fantastic. Because of that, right, I'm done. I, I'm great. I have my snapshot. All this process took in time was seconds, right? Not hours, right? Not hundreds or thousands of seconds, just seconds. The benefit now is, okay, hey, I'm done. I now release the systems to go back and do, right, their full mode, right back. There's no more movement of I.O. between the redo log files and the, the production volumes, right? All that, none of that exists anymore. So, hey, I've got not only a faster process, that has better integrity, 
right? We guarantee when you use our agents 100% transactional integrity. So I've got a better snapshot that takes less time that when I'm done with it, my service goes back into full operational mode, and it's done in seconds, not in hours. Listen, this is what you want, okay? This is how we transform ourselves from going from that legacy environment to what we actually want to have, right? Great. So what's next? Well, great, Dwayne. You showed me how I can back my stuff up or protect it. Well, what's next? Well, what's next is recovery. You can now use the snapshots to instantly recover your virtual machines. Well, what if you don't have to do a bare metal recovery of a whole machine? Can I do something different? Sure. You can bring back a single file, a folder, a directory, right? whatever you need. The benefit now is rather than rolling data back, rather than getting change block tracks tracked and then trying to reverse all that, listen, you can bring up an environment right next to the environment you have and look and see what data you want, grab it, and put it where you want it to go. Okay? Now, that's not tech speak. That's, hey, that's what I want. Grab what you want. Put it where you want it to go. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about instant recovery with no downtime. Okay? Why? Many times with other solutions, when you want to recover something or roll something back, well, that means you're about to blow something away. Okay? Uh, we don't want that. We want you to be surgical in your recovery. Right? Don't, don't touch everything. Right? Think of, think of that old game operation, right, with the, with the little red nose on the guy in the hospital bed. Right? Don't touch the sides if you don't have to. Right? Get in there, be so clean that you come out that no one even, know you, no one even knows you were there to do recovery. That's what you want. Right? Instant recovery, no downtime. So I also want to cover a few things for you in the time uh, around VAAI. Okay? So what are the benefits of, of, of these items for you in your environment? So there's a, a lot of you out there who are supporting up virtual machines like hotcakes. Okay? I'm not going to tell you to stop. But what, what I want to tell you to do is do it better, okay? So what are some of the benefits of VAAI? Higher data mobility, faster cloning, faster formatting, a higher VM to host ratio. What does that mean again? That means you can have more virtual machines in your clustered environment on each one of those nodes. Why? Because there's less overhead, right, when you do things like DRS or vMotion or, or just create new VMs. Okay, so there are, however, some challenges to VAAI, right? It's limited usually to specific arrays, and some of those arrays have to be brand new, and some of them are, uh, get kind of expensive, right? Also, with VAAI, you have to work within the same type of array frame and, and family, right? So sometimes you have to be, you have to kind of, you know, lock yourself into a vendor, okay? And, you know, our goal at Backhunter is to kind of release right, that vendor lock-in so that you can have the freedom, right, to have a heritage environment, right? Hey, if you want T1 disk from, you know, a certain company, that's fine. Get it. No issues. Okay, I'll make that stuff even run better. But part of our goal is to make your data mobile, right? So remember I talked about those, those number of things that we want to do. We want to protect. We want to recover, right? We may want to virtualize some stuff. But I talked about disaster recovery, and I talked about replication and making your data mobile. Right? Well, if you're stuck with one vendor, you may not be able to make your data as mobile as you'd like to. So what we're going to do is provide the ability for you to have your data be more mobile. So how do we do that? Well, VAAI improves VCS performance in a number of different ways. Right? So there's a few main primitives. Right? And you guys can do your own research on this. I don't want this to become a, a VAAI course. I want to actually tell you how Focuser helps with this process. Okay? So. What's going to happen is this. So I'm going to go through here and actually give you an example of what occurs when you clone right, some virtual machines okay, on two different SAN arrays right, without Falcon Store being in the mix. So over here, I've got the pink storage vendor, right, and, and here's some LUNs. Right? So we'll call that Array 2, and we'll call this guy Array 1. Okay? And even if you have VAAI support, Remember that these two, and this could be brand new arrays, okay, are 
are from different disc vendors, right? So just pick two disc vendors, maybe one you like, one you don't like, or, or one that's expensive, one that's not expensive, doesn't matter, but they could be new, okay? So what happens? Well, I'm not going to clone my virtual machine. When I clone that virtual machine, what that really means is I'm going to take the data on this disk and move it to that disk, okay? That's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to clone it so I have another VM that I can use somewhere else. Great. What actually occurs when I do that from the storage side, right? What happens with the I.O.? Well, this is what occurs. Here are the blocks of data that make up that virtual machine, right? Right here. What you see occurring is I have to copy, right, that data from this blue storage volume to this pink storage volume. What you notice is... Right, VAI, even with VAI support, the host systems, right? This is your virtual environment. These are your ESX servers that are maintaining your virtual machines, right? Well, hey, I'm doing this VM clone, and what I'm noticing is, hey, there's a lot of I.O. that's going to have to be handled by my ESX server hosts, okay? These different arrays from different manufacturers both independently have VAAI support, but they don't work together. So your host systems, your, your vSphere hosts, have to take the burden of all of this I.O. Okay? So now there's a lot of high read and write I.O. traffic between vSphere server and your storage controllers. Right? So you're going to read from the blue LUN and write to the red LUN. Right? So how we extend right, the value of VAAI is this, and we do this to any storage. Okay? What did he say? Yes. He said that Falcon Store extends the value of VAAI to any storage. Okay? Even storage vendors that do not support VAAI. So here's that same example. Okay? VAI, remember, is supported by Falcon Store NSS at our level here. Right? So I've now implanted into this environment the Falcon Store appliances. Okay? And we've connected them to those same storage vendors, okay? And actually, neither one of these actually has VAI support, but we can enable it at our level. I'm going to clone that virtual machine again. Now what occurs? Well, here's that virtual machine that's going to be now written to that from the, from the pink LUN to the blue LUN. Because of our support in integration with VAAI, you'll notice that the, the trip that that data has to make from that one array to the other is all within the Falcon Store environment. The benefit to that is your host servers, your vSphere host servers do not have to handle or even deal with the I.O. impact. Why? We've minimized all of that. So we've reduced the utilization of your server resources, and we've minimized the I.O. traffic between the vSphere servers and the Falcon Store NSS appliances. So the benefit now is let us do the heavy lifting Right, and use those extra cycles that you would have used to do these clonings. Right, use that to process more data. Use that to have more VMs in your environment so you have a higher ratio, again, of virtual machines to vSphere hosts. So next topic, I want to move a little bit quickly here, but want to cover these things as well. Disaster recovery in the uh, VMware environment. So currently... As we just discussed VAAI in this previous section, okay, well, when you want to do things like, you know, disaster recovery and VMware environments, if you want to use things like SRM, okay, you know, or you want to do replication, what usually occurs, again, is your array-based replication requires the same array model on both sites, okay? Even if you buy your storage from the same vendor, okay, they may require that your DR location has the same very expensive storage that you have in production, okay? Even though that vendor may have different class of disks, you may be tied into a specific model so that you can actually do replication, okay? There's going to be probably no support for physical to virtual disaster recovery, 
And probably if you're doing array to array based replication, you're probably going to have crash consistent states on the remote location, right? Which means, hey, if you've got to do a recovery, it's going to take you more time because your data is not going to have transaction integrity, okay? And when we do array to array based replication, there's usually very poor WAN bandwidth utilization, right? So again, I'll remind you that I'm frugal, and part of my goal is to allow you to do a few things. One, Use any storage at any location you want. You may, you may buy brand new storage for production from a different vendor than you had before. But now you may be able to take that older storage that you had in production. It's still good. It's still under warranty. Stick that stuff out in DR, right? Don't buy two locations, right? Buy storage for one and reuse what you have. Nothing is less expensive than using something you already own. Okay? So great. So now I can mix, mix, and, match, mix and match my array vendors. Great. So how do we or what are our key components that allow us to integrate with the Site Recovery Manager? Okay, well, here they are. So I, I introduced you before to our Snapshot Director of Virtual Appliance, and I introduced you before to our Snapshot Agents. The one thing I didn't introduce you to yet was the Falcon Store Storage Replication Adapter, or what we like to call our SRA. Okay. Now, you may have heard of SRAs before, so SRAs are a technology or an API that was uh, developed by VMware for ESX to allow storage vendors to write to it. So when they want to do things like replication and use things like Site Recovery Manager, they can do that all within Virtual Center. Fantastic. The issue is, right, usually if you want to use an SRA, right, the SRA has to be identical between the storage vendor that you're using, right? And, of course, the guys at Storage Company A are going to have a different SRA than the guys at Storage Company B, right? And even within the same company, Right? The SRA for the high-class storage may not be the same SRA you can use for the low-class storage. So there's an issue. Right? How can you pick and choose your vendor of choice? Right? How can you get the most bang for your buck? You may say, Dwayne, you said you were frugal. You've got to help me out here. So how do we get you to get your most bang for the buck? Well, Falcon Store has our own SRA that we can use for any storage that we support. So if it's on the Falcon Store matrix and it's on the standard certification list for VMware, it's now certified. Right to work with SRM, fantastic. Right, that's good news for you. Yes, it is good news. Great, excellent. So how does that work? Well, again, remember, Site Recovery Manager does those wonderful things where you can fill over from one site to the other site, and then back from the remote site back to the primary site. Right, all with just a couple of clicks. Right, excellent. Yes, that's how it works. So here are the pieces from Falcon Store that now allow you to do this. Okay, using any storage vendor at any location, whether the storage vendor supports SRM or not, right? We have you covered, okay? So what you see here, oops, sorry, what you see here at the top is your, v, your VMware vCenter servers. We've got the Site Recovery Manager plugin and the Falcon Star SRA. So you have that at this location and you have it over here at the remote location. This allows, right, our NSS appliances down here that are footprinting your storage Right to be able to provide to you a heterogeneous platform where you can have heterogeneous replication. Excellent. Okay. So of course here's the storage we're using. Right, it's just generic storage. Okay. In this environment, it can be iSCSI, right? One gig or ten gig. Out here, it can be iSCSI, it can be fiber channel. Doesn't matter. It can even be mixed or matched. And right, we're going to optimize replication between your storage arrays. Right. So not only are we can not only can we provide Things like thin provisioning, not only can we virtualize your storage, not only can we give you snapshots that have data integrity, right, 100% data integrity, right, we can do more than that. We can efficiently replicate your data between locations so that when you hit the button to fill over to your remote location, the chances are much more likely that your data is there and it's ready to roll. Why? Because we've done it more efficiently and we've done it with integrity, right? Many times to get integrity, you have to lose efficiency. We're giving you both, right? Wonderful stuff. So that's how we get you out to the DR site, right? We look at your box. We, we use our, our microscan technology to look at your the sectors on disk just to see what's changed, right? And I will tell you, in most environments, we save 80% or more of the amount of bandwidth you would need to replicate that same amount of data, right? 80%. That's huge. Well, you may then say, well, how do we get back? 
Well, we've got a reprotection feature so that when you're running out there at the remote location, we're then protecting it automatically, and we're sending your data back automatically back to your production environment, right, where you started, right? This is automatic. You don't have to go in and remember to turn the switch on and, and, re and reverse the replication. We do this for you automatically. Why? Because we know that as soon as you have the capability to come out of DR, okay, to come out of that remote location, you want to get back to primary. That's where your better storage is. That's where you have your better ESX servers, right? That's where you reside most of the time. You don't want to operate in DR. You want to operate in production. So we automate a lot of these processes so that you can easily recover your environment, okay? We're talking about recovery, not restoration. We're talking about speed, maintaining SLAs, actually blowing SLAs out of the water because you got the stuff back long before people knew the stuff was gone, okay? Excellent. So what do we do again? Just a, here's a quick list for you on what do we do again around, uh, you know, SRM, right, vCenter and, and Site Recovery Manager, we provide heterogeneous replication for VMware environments. Heterogeneous, what does that mean again? Any storage, right, any storage. If it's supported by VMware, hey, use us, replicate it from that point to this point, vendors don't have to match. Full automation of failover and failback operations with Site Recovery Manager. Full automation, not partial automation, full automation. We enable VMware DR deployments on any HCL certified storage platforms. What does that mean? We're talking specifically about SRM. SRM has its own list of certified storage arrays. It's a very short list, and the arrays on it are very expensive. With the Falcon Source Solution, because we support with our SRA and our VAAI, we can now use any standard HCL certified storage platforms we can enable you to use those with SRM. Okay, again, I'm frugal, save yourself some money, do the right thing. What does this do? It enables you to use your current infrastructure to implement Site Recovery Manager, right, without having to buy more storage for the remote location or change storage at your primary location or having to buy brand new storage for both your primary and remote locations, okay? Enable you to use your current infrastructure. So what does that do for me? That provides now a cost-effective DR strategy implementation, because now I can afford to do it, right? I don't have to buy all this new storage, okay? I can keep fiber channel storage at primary and, 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 and different storage I may have, you know, at remote. I may have tier one disk at primary. I can have my tier two disk at remote, not an issue. Now, what's the benefit? You now have a disaster recovery solution that protect the infrastructure investment that you already have, and we give you enough flexibility so that you can pick and choose, hey, if there are things you want to change, fine, feel free to change those. Okay, it's, it's, it's always a good time to, to fix and make things better, right? But we give you that flexibility. Now, I'm coming uh, up to kind of our, our last things here, but want to just review with you as well, right? We talked about physical servers. And you may say, well, Dwayne, this is a VMUG. Remember, virtualization? Why are we talking about physical servers? Well, I'll tell you. You know that you guys have, you know, ESX or, 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 uh, or VMware server running in your environment. That, that's great. But you also know that, listen, you are not 100% virtualized yet, okay? Some of you are still at 20%. Some of you are just dabbling for the first time into virtualization, which is fine, and we welcome you, okay? But the real issues at hand are really this. There's some things that you want to virtualize, but you, you ran out of space or you ran out of budget, so you have to wait, okay? And, and it makes it difficult, and you got to go, and you don't have time, and you're already managing a very large environment. So the problem is, well, hey, how do I now protect, right, those physical servers? I haven't virtualized them yet, okay? But, but how do I protect them? Okay, well, with our solution, you can protect them, right? So here in my example, Right, here's a Falcon Store appliance where we could be doing CDP, okay, or what we call our continuous data protection. Right, and here's some physical servers, okay, let's say these are Windows hosts, right, or Linux hosts, where they may have some SAN provision, some SAN provision storage, or even maybe even some directly attached disk, right? But, but let's say it's SAN provision, great. 
what's going to happen is on this on the storage where I have uh, behind the Falcon store, I may have some snapshots, right, and some mirrors, right, that I can actually utilize for my CDP appliance. Right, I'm managing this storage. So remember, from my previous example, I can replicate this data very efficiently out to my DR site. So now out here, I've got some replica copies of my of my of my LUNs and some snapshots, right, for both the physical environment and the virtual environment. Well, listen, if I've got the data there. Why not go ahead and do a conversion and make that physical box virtual? All right? Great. I can do that. You can do that? Yeah. Or I should say we can do that. All right? You've got your data out here that's got integrity, right, because we've used our snapshot agents. And Falconster actually gives you all the tools you need to do this. So the benefit now is you can easily, okay, just do a P2V. So here in production, right, you may have a physical server, but when you run it out of here at the remote location, hey, it can be virtualized. You can mount these runs right through raw disk mapping right to your ESX server and run right these applications that are running on these physical servers here virtually. And when you're all done and you reverse the replication from the DR site back to primary, right, you can update these data stores out here and these physical servers can be up to date when you fail back to primary. Right? Fantastic. Again, physical servers can now be integrated into your SRM environment. What did he say? Yes, he said your physical servers can be integrated into your protection and your failover schemes with your SRM environment. So when you hit that one button push for failover, you can grab those physical servers and move those out and make them virtual at the remote location. So I told you before, Recover track is something that assists with the orchestration of all of this. So how does that work? Well, here's my physical server that you have. Okay. You can actually this is at the local location here. Okay, and here's my Falcon Store appliances where I've got WAN between the two connected and I'm gonna optimize uh, the transaction uh, the transactions or the or the replication between these two locations, right? I can even encrypt this line and offer quality of service and compression, wonderful stuff, okay? I've got my storage, right, behind the Falcon Store appliances so I know I can do my recover track automatic failover and fail back, okay, great. So what's gonna happen? At my local location, I've got my physical server. I can actually PDV this guy locally if I want to, okay? But let's say that we've gotta go out and, and do something even more drastic. Okay, I can actually bring that server from this local site to my DR site and have them virtual out here. Okay, so I moved them from San Francisco. I could have had them locally here in San Francisco on my virtual right, environment. I could have had them on this ESX server. I could have done a local P2V. Right, but in this case, hey, I'm doing a remote. I'm taking this guy from my local location in San Francisco, and now I'm bringing him to my New York location, and he's going to run on my ESX server out of New York. Right, great. All those things apply where the, the IP addresses changes, yes. All that stuff happens because it's been pre pre scripted and pre set up in SRM and our recovery track environment. What happens now? You can also bring a third option. You can bring this physical server that you have here at your local site in San Francisco to a physical server in New York. Wait, he said what? Yes, you have a physical server here. You can fail this guy out to a separate, independent physical server in New York. Yes, we have that capability, okay? It can be the same box or it can be a different box because we actually have P to different P capability. All right, so I want to remind you, I told you guys that we're in my session in uh, New Brunswick, in Maine. Uh, at VMworld, we have a number of announcements that are coming out. Uh, our, our new version of Recovery Track, which is already available, however, it hasn't been announced yet, will be, av will be announced at VMworld. Okay, so these are just different options for you, right? So, well, what does Recovery Track do again? Recover Track technology automates, right, the complex and time-consuming and error-prone DR procedures, right? And we know why they're error-prone. You guys build virtual machines in your sleep on the weekend. You recover machines all the time with no issues while we're eating cold pizza on the weekends. However, 
Make it during business hours when the CIO or the CEO is sitting over your shoulder. You start sweating, and sometimes mistakes happen. Okay, so listen. This now allows us to get rid of all those things that we could possibly do wrong. Right? We get rid of those. So all we have to do is click the button and just watch it occur. Just watch it happen. Wonderful. Okay. What does that really mean for you? That allows you now to non-destructively test your DR plans. And those of you that have ever been in any of my sessions, I tell you, the first thing I want you to do is document your DR strategy. Then I want you to test your DR strategy. Then I want you to take your DR strategy and the test and give it to the least technical person on your team. If that person who's the least technical person on your team can actually activate and do DR, you're good to go. If they can't, what you have to do is redocument, okay, since you have all the procedures down, test them again, and then give that solution set to the least technical person on your team to make sure that they can actually test and implement DR, okay? When you need it, you want to make sure it's there. So you got to test. The benefit of the Recover Track solution is this. We're going to automate a lot of this process for you. Okay. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to allow you to test your DR strategy without actually having to impact production. Many times when you test an environment, okay, you've got to bring down production to make sure it actually works. With this solution, you don't have to do that. Now, I talked about service-oriented views before. What does that mean in this case? Well, listen, you can now define servers, hypervisors, clusters, storage, recover sites, whether they're local, remote, if they're split, okay, different IT inventories. You put all this stuff into the environment, and you script that how you want it to recur. Actually, scripting is a, is a bad word. You don't have to script anything, okay? You select from a GUI. What you want to go where, yes, I said a GUI, what you want to go where and how you want it to work, and you hit the button. And we'll save that. And we'll let you kind of replay it or run it and make sure it works. Great. Now, if you want to adjust it, feel free to adjust it. But that's how you should be planning DR, around the services that you want to, to implement. What you want to come up first, right? Many times people go to the DR site and just start turning stuff on. No, right No. You guys know that your DNS servers have to come up before your other servers, right? Then you've got Active Directory has to Active Directory has to come up before Exchange or SQL, right? So have some order to your processes and build that order into your DR site plan, and then it occurs that way, right? Fantastic stuff. Okay. So what am I actually talking about? I told you I wanted to bring you some value, so we want to help you in a few ways, right? Around disaster recovery, we want to help you manage. Right? Data growth. Right? Tiering, consolidation, right, virtualization of your storage may assist you with that. Okay? What else? I want to give you some business continuity. Right? Not just disaster recovery, business continuity. High availability, clustering, automated disaster recovery. That's what you need. But when I do that, I want to make sure that my data, right? I want to have data assurance. I want to make sure that my data is good to go. So with that, I'm going to give you snapshots that have integrity, right, they have application awareness, great. I'm going to give you some highly efficient replication, right, so I can get my data from point A to point B when I need to, okay, so that what can we do with that data? Recover it rapidly, okay, and, and one of the biggest things, if you, please don't forget, remember I'm frugal, okay, frugal's not cheap, remember I'm frugal, I want to do this, right, and also, in the, at the end state, I want to save some money, okay? How am I going to do that? Maybe using things like thin provisioning or easing my data migration pain from old technology to new technology and getting some more bang for my buck, right? By using things like WAN optimization and automation in my environment so that I can have less hand touch, right? You can, I would much rather watch a process and, and manage it than have to go touch every piece of it. Okay, uh, we're going to give you with our platform the ability, right, to cost contain your environment by providing an easier way to manage your environment, 
so you can do it with, with fewer people. Not that you need less people, but now be more proactive. If you don't have to go out and touch all these pieces just to see what's happening, now you can be more proactive in keeping your environment up, right? We're all trying to push again for that 24 by 7 fully available environment. So I'm going to be closing out here. I want to remind you that all of our solutions at Falconster can be right-sized for your location. If you've got remote or branch offices, you can protect those environments with a virtual appliance, right? I actually have customers who protect their physical service at a location to a virtual appliance, right? Great. You may have some areas that are a little bit larger than some of those remote offices that could be regional, okay, where you want to have, you know, or you're not running like ESX, you can actually have self-contained, ready to deploy, all-in-one units. Right? We give you our software and, and some storage, and you can actually utilize this to, hey, project the environment. Right? Fantastic. Or if you have a lot of leftover storage in your environment because we're going to help you be so efficient in its use, you may say, you know what? By the time the Falcon Store guys were done, they took all this extra storage I had left over because now they can do thin provisioning and snapshots that don't take as much space and they can replicate my data more efficiently so I don't have to keep 18 copies of it, I can keep three or two or one. The benefit now is, well, if you've got extra resources left over, rather than buying something else, let us use some of those resources that you already own, okay, to give you a, a better solution, okay? Again, here's some integration points that you can, you know, you can always find on our web for you, okay? Again, right, we are certified as a SVD for uh, VMware and ESX. We do have VAAI or vStorage API for rate integration uh, offloading and things like that, but we have the integration available. We have our vCenter APIs for vSphere. We actually have our site recovery manager certification, so we can be that automated disaster recovery for the your heterogeneous SAN environment, so you can have that openness to choose the vendors you like, and we also give you that WAN optimization, so you can replicate data very efficiently. Right. And of course, right, we support with our hypertrack technology the V A the V storage APIs for data protection, right? We have to maintain those that change block tracking. Right? Excellent. So next test, if you'd like to see them, if you'd like to see uh more about Recover Track, okay, great. You can click on that first link. Or if you want to see a demo, right, of any of our products, you can log into our demo section. So not only do we cover C D P and NSS we also cover uh, the rest of the Falcon Store platform, right? Every Wednesday of the month, we actually have a demo that occurs, okay? And if you're interested, feel free to go and download one of our free virtual appliances, okay, at our website. Sometimes I will tell you these links sometimes do change. So always remember, go to falconstore.com, and you can always click and find out where you need to go. And if you can't, hey, there's a telephone number almost on every page, or hit the Contact Us button, and we're more than happy to assist you. Okay? With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Rachel, who I want to thank her for giving me such a wonderful introduction some time ago, uh, and I probably ran over more time than I needed to, but I, I wanted to make sure that we covered a lot, and I want to invite any of you to reach out to us at any time because we are here for you. Rachel, back to you. Thank you, Duane. Like you said, if you guys have any questions, p please feel free to reach out to Duane or contact our sales department using the contact information given on this last slide. We hope you have found this information valuable, and we would love to see you at future VMUG events. Check out the events section of our webpage at www.falconstore.com events to see where you can find us next.